Okay, today uh, we're going to look at how shaking the kefir can make a difference. This one was shaken up very well before I put it into the refrigerator. You can see it's completely solidified all the way down to the bottom. This one I didn't shake at all except for a little movement putting it into the refrigerator and back. As you can see the bottom, the bottom is liquidy, which is fine, but now ba this one I shook up basically after a four hour ferment, I shook this one up before it went to the fridge. To shake or not to shake, that is the question. It really depends. Um, I typically like to shake gets it done more evenly maybe a little faster this there's some inconsistencies but there's the difference these are about two parts milk to one part grain grains are up to about here and then filled two-thirds with milk the uh, these were out for four hours and then put back into the refrigerator till this morning, the remainder of the 24 hours. So they were in the fridge 24 hours, except for four hours they were put out at about 68 to 69 degrees. This is the one that was shaken. Well, the non-shaken one definitely has a really strong top. Really thick top, but it's watery on the bottom. Oh, milky. Stir that up, and I'll strain it out. Not shaking one. It uh, strained down pretty quick because there was a little bit of milkiness in the bottom. So. To shake or not to shake? I say shake, like they always have. You need uh, just a little bit of movement, some disturbances uh, during the fermentation to keep the grains in contact with uh, fresh milk. Otherwise you get that little bit of separation into the bottom of the fresh milk that still hasn't gotten taken over by the kefir. So giving it a little mix or stir helps it inoculate the rest of the milk quicker, more fully and completely, which I think works better 